come here. Uh, Albania is amazing. Top to bottom, it's just vast, diverse, small, but big. It's hard to explain. <laughs> from outside of Saranda, Albania. We are on a two-week tour through four countries. <laughs> now that I've got the dog out of the way, we are on a two-week tour of North Macedonia, Kosovo, Montenegro, and Albania with Choose Balkans. These last three days of our trip would take us across the southern portion of Albania, hitting the cities of Jerkaster and Permet before traveling back to the capital to fly home. We left Saranda this morning after another giant meal. They gave us a ton for breakfast. We are heading to yet another UNESCO World Heritage Site today. We did one yesterday and we're heading to our third or fourth of the trip here in two weeks. But before we go and check out a World Heritage Site, we're gonna check out a natural site here outside of Saranda on the way. This site is called the Blue Eye because where the spring bubbles up into this little river and then into a lake, it's quite a blue-green color. Our guide was telling us that a while ago there was just kind of a couple restaurants here, but it's been developed by the government as a natural site and been open to a lot more visitors. We're here on a Friday early in the morning. There's been a couple tour buses that have come through, but when we first got here, there wasn't really anybody around that changes on the weekend. He said on Saturdays, you can wait in a long line of cars to see this small area. But I feel like if this was in another country, it would be quite crowded all of the time. So make a plan and come here on a weekday, maybe in the morning, and uh, you can have this place to yourself. Nick says that where you can see the spring flowing up right here is about 50 meters. You can see so far down. Have you touched it? Yeah. It's cold? It is cold. I'm gonna fall in, and then it's gonna be really cold. You want to go diving in that? Yeah. <laughs> Your pants are covered in, in uh, parking lot dog hair. So we've driven about another 30 minutes or so, crossed over a mountain, and come down into a valley about 15 miles from the border of Greece. We're on our way to Jurakaster, a UNESCO World Heritage Site, but since we're running a little bit ahead of schedule, our guide has pulled over to show us a couple more local sites. Our first stop is another Ottoman-style bridge, which uh, is always incredible because they've held up so well, even when they're right next to newer bridges that aren't faring as well. Our quick detour took us up a winding road to a hillside town and a religious site with a long history. Today, the Tekya is the center for the Bektashi Sufi Muslims. Our guide helped us meet and talk with the Dervish Baba, a religious leader, and we seemed to be the only visitors walking through the peaceful site. But it wasn't always so quiet. The current structures built in the 1800s are situated next to what was once the main route to Greece. I don't fully understand it, and there's a lot of sites here in Albania that I don't fully understand. Um, but having a guide is really helpful. This dervish site is very sacred to the people, and you can see that a lot of the people here in this tiny village, what is now a tiny village, um, take great care of this site. We've made about another 15 minute or 20 minute drive down from the Dervish site to the city of Jurokaster. We're in the more modern area of the city, if you can call it modern. Some of these houses are still pretty old. And now we're gonna have a probably giant traditional lunch and what better place to have it than under a tree that is apparently old and important and is a natural monument. So after another giant meal of traditional food, including some vegetables, chicken, and meatballs. You should put the meatball in your mouth. <laughs> Don't ask questions, just put it in your mouth. We are out exploring the old part of Geocaster. We're actually staying in a hotel here that I believe has quite the history, but it is in the old part of the city. Now, Jirakashtar and Barat share a UNESCO World Heritage Site. The reason is, is they both are cities that are full of Ottoman-style houses. Now, while Barat is known as a city of 1,001 windows, 
Jericaster is known as the Stone City because of the stone buildings that are everywhere. There's actually a large number of two-story Ottoman-style houses in the city, and they share stone walls and a distinct stone roof. Some other reasons that Jericaster was chosen as a UNESCO World Heritage Site include the fact that it has a preserved bazaar, which is undergoing some restoration while we're here right now. Like its sister city of Barat, Jericaster's crown jewel is a fortress overlooking the old town and the entire valley. I want you to know we can make it together. The clock tower is the symbol of Jericaster and it's located in the fortress on top of the city. The fortress is about 1500 years old and it's been used for several purposes, including an arsenal for a pasha, a prison, and most recently a folk music festival. And like several Albanian sites, the fortress is home to an interesting mix of history and legend. This fortress has a tragic tale behind it. When it was attacked in the 15th century, a princess of Jiro supposedly jumped to her death with her baby rather than surrender. The baby survived, but the castle was given the name Jiro Castor after Princess of Jiro. Despite the sad origin story, the view from the iconic front is incredible. We ended our night with a traditional meal that featured the city's savory pies, along with an endless number of other dishes. Don't mind us if we're panting. Um, we are stuffed with food again. I leave dinner sweating every night. <laughs> um, fried cheese with honey and sesame seeds is my new favorite dish. Mm. And they served an incredible dessert made of sheep's cheese and figs, yeah. I believe. Think custard, but better. <laughs> I don't know, I would have been scared of sheep products a few years ago, but sheep's cheese and sheep's milk has been delicious. Today was a great day. The castles that we've been visiting are kind of uh, an anomaly, not really an anomaly, but uh, unique in the fact that they're not like places, other castles in Europe that are turned into hotels or restaurants. They're kind of left in their original state as they're excavated, so you can kind of climb around and see them, at least get an idea of what they once were instead of some modernized version of them. Um, you should come here. Uh, Albania is amazing. Top to bottom, it's just vast, diverse, small, but big. It's hard to explain. Good morning from the Viosa River in Albania. We left Duracaster this morning, our beautiful hotel provided us with some breakfast out on the balcony overlooking the fortress there in the old part of town. And we've taken about a 45 minute drive or so to the river to have some coffee and some water here on the water where there's several waterfalls and a beautiful canyon and the water they served at the river restaurant. Uh, they just went out to one of the fountains and uh, filled up their water. It tastes yeah. delicious. Some water on the water. It's a, it's a river, the Viosa River is between two giant mountain ranges that kind of snakes along. We're headed to the town of Permet today to visit, hopefully, weather permitting, a hot spring uh, that we've been really looking forward to visiting. It's supposed to have an extremely beautiful view, so cross your fingers that when we get there the weather is holding up and it's still sunny like it is right now. I'm always amazed by the natural beauty here in Albania. We've seen some incredible mountains, we've seen beautiful beaches. And now we are in between two mountain ranges headed to a hot spring and there are people here but uh, it is gorgeous and it is just stunning. Today is June 1st here in Albania and I believe it is the National Children's Day, Kids Day, so I think kids are getting out of school. There are a couple school groups here at the uh, canyon where we are so that's why it's a little bit more crowded than we've experienced. It's mostly kids uh, celebrating their day so pretty cool. I think we're going to hit the road and hopefully get to our hot spring. We're in a town, what, four hours from Toronto, which is where Nick lives. And we were stopping to look at the GPS and Nick yelled at someone out the window. It's his neighbor. Nick knows everybody. That's why you should get a guide so you can know every single person in Albania. 
Sorry guys, that's all right. <laughs> what to do, Benny is so, so small. <laughs> So we've made it to Permet, we've made it to the Thermal Springs, and as you might be able to tell, people know about this spot. It's actually quite busy right now. There's a couple tour buses here, and we know we're here on Children's Day, so I think that there may be some tour buses full of kids from different towns in Albania. The weather's really nice right now on the 1st of June, even though you can still see some snow up on top of the mountains. But we're hoping that people clear out uh, for some lunch at some point. But it doesn't cost much to get in. They charged us 50 lek for the car. And then other than that, it's free. But come wearing your bathing suit because there's not really any place to change. This makes it so much more real. When you have to cross a slick Ottoman bridge to get to your spring. Located about a 20 kilometer drive from Permet, this series of natural pools sit alongside a river cutting through a scenic canyon. Each pool is said to have its own medicinal properties based on the temperature and minerals. Are you ready for this? <laughs> Supposedly, these different hot springs cure different diseases. I have a lot of neck pain and some chronic neck pain, so maybe if I uh, swim real deep in one, it'll get better. It's uh, not incredibly warm. <laughs> Is there a bottom? There is a bottom. <laughs> oh, oh, found a deeper bottom. <laughs> the bottom is furry. <laughs> I just dove down and splashed me to get some of this uh, black mud so I could do some exfoliation. <laughs> I'm gonna have great skin or I'm gonna break out everywhere. <laughs> One of those two things. You can drink the water from this spring and it's good for your stomach. You just have to go to where the water's coming in. <laughs> totally fine, right? You want to test it first? You, you go first. <laughs> it's water! It's not Raki! Why is not Raki? <laughs> An Albanian hot spring should just be Raki. Yeah. <laughs> An Albanian hot spring is going to be Raki. <laughs> okay, so we left our shoes in the car because we didn't want to carry them, but uh, you should probably bring shoes because it is slick. Thanks to the geothermal activity that provides a warm contrast to the chilly river. Ah, oh, it's cold. Whoa. I'm getting back in. The springs are supposedly a great place to swim in the colder months. We've moved over to the bigger pool, which is supposed to be good for your skin. It's also the most crowded pool, but it has a great view. We were told that this pool was actually two degrees Celsius cooler than the other one that we were in, but I think because the sun's hitting it, it's warmer. It actually is notably warmer. That's probably why everybody's in it. Yeah. Our guide said that they come out here in January, though, so it must be warm enough at that point to at least be able to, to tolerate it in the winter without getting frostbite. <laughs> or they're Albanian. Or, yeah, they're Albanian, and they're just tougher than me. I know all we did was float in the hot springs, but we've worked up an appetite, so we're gonna go find some lunch. I think one danger with Albania is that everyone's gonna try to overfeed you. The food will just keep coming, and it will all be super delicious. Yeah, we keep saying, Nick, it's too much, and he says, no, every time. <laughs> eat, eat. And sometimes we order things and just more stuff keeps coming because they make it and they thought our table needed it. Yeah, the dining's delicious, but it's exhausting, so just be prepared. Uh, don't say no, just eat. <laughs> That's my only advice for you. But we have checked into our guest house. It is called the Funky Guest House. It is really, really cute and sits on the center of Permet, which is very cute itself and uh, not that big. So this guest house has an eclectic mix of art and the rooms are really unique and even some of the lobby areas are really special. They also greeted us with an Albanian suite when we got here. I think it was made from walnuts and fruit. It was called Glico, I believe. I have no idea how to spell that so I'll have to find it but it was really delicious and really sweet of them to greet us with that. I think we're taking a drive into the mountains now to see a special site that Nick has told us about. Excited to go see it. Let's go check it out. Permet serves as the base for many outdoor adventures. We didn't have the time to experience the surrounding outdoors like that, but we used a couple hours to take a winding drive up into the nearby mountains to explore another Tekia, this time with a quiet and panoramic location. I don't think you can see it, but this tiny little road all the way down there is what we took to come up. 
It's a little bumpy. This one up on a hill, you can see that people are taking great pride in it. It was something I think that has been very special to them for a very long time. And our guide was saying that people have been donating money to make it into a paradise or really special place. And you can see that in all of the little details up there. We are back in Permet, and Permet is really a natural beauty. It sits at the bottom of a mountain that's covered with snow at the top and alongside a river. Their slogan is, besides the sea, we have everything else. And I think you really can do just about everything here. You can go to the hot springs, you can go hiking, you can go whitewater rafting, you can ride horses. There's a national forest right down the road. And they also have a giant rock in the center of the city. It thankfully has stairs now. Our guide says people were getting hurt and getting killed trying to climb up to the top of it, so they've made it easy to get up. Easy being a relative term. Sir, are some steep stairs. Focus on the stairs. So close your eyes. I'll ever get over just how blue and how green the water is here. Group tours aren't something that we are necessarily usually for. It's not usually up our alley. But I was thinking about what I would consider a good group tour. And I mean, this this is a little bit of a one-off because we're the only two people on the group <laughs> tour. But I, I would say that a good group tour would be defined as having experiences that you wouldn't have on your own. Um, and this tour has definitely had that. Uh, Choose Balkans and the guide that we've been assigned has gone above and beyond to provide us something that we'll probably never forget and things that we definitely would not have uncovered had we just been uh, renting a car and driving on our own. Well, we have checked into our last room through Choose Balkans for our trip through Albania. We will be heading home at 4.30 in the morning and a driver will be coming to pick us up from our room at 2.30 in the morning so we can start our trip home. For our final day, we didn't have too much on the agenda other than seeing Apollonia, which is a historic site that's pretty important to Albania, and it's on the uh, pending list, I believe, for a UNESCO World Heritage Site. But after we left Permet today, Nick, our guide, decided to have us meet one of his friends on our way to the site. Yeah, his friend has a huge complex of a winery, vineyard, olive grove, um, meat processing operation. It's quite the outfit. But before we got up to the complex, Nick had to tell uh, the guy that we were meeting that it would just be a quick visit to take a look at how the products are made and to not make a huge meal for us. Um, he wanted to make like a whole lamb for us before we got there and we had of course to get to the historic site and then back to Toronto where we will we'll fly out in the morning and um, I think that just shows uh, the hospitality that's here in Albania. By prepare a whole lamb, Stephanie means actually take a live lamb from his farm and butcher it for, specifically for our arrival. So uh, that's a huge deal. I think you can find that hospitality anywhere in Albania. It's been insane, you know, to experience. People will be so quick to welcome you into your home. And I think we got to experience more of that by doing a tour with a local guide who was able to say, here's my friends from America, um, you know, they're here to visit, why don't you welcome them in? But I think that there would even be a level of that if you were doing it on your own. I, I think it is a um, cultural rule maybe that you welcome strangers in. And I think that's the biggest danger you'll face here is that everybody will try to feed you until you can't eat anymore. And uh, yeah, they'll, you know, if you give them a heads up, they'll be trying to prepare an entire lamb just for you. I think that probably wraps it up for us. We're just going to lay low here until uh, our driver comes to take us to the airport. If you stuck with us through this whole series, we really appreciate it. We hope it was helpful. We hope you enjoyed it. If you like this particular video, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to our channel and click the bell to be the first to know when we post something new. Thanks for watching. Good night for the final time from Albania, but we hope to be back. <laughs>